It was my memory of the road that brought me back, snaking as it does over the dry hills, the north face of the Wilpena Range in the distance, before dropping into the valley below. As a small child, I would sit on the back seat of the old Holden as we drove into the ranges in the early 1960s. Sitting alongside my older brother and sister, I would strain to see over my father's shoulders, out through the front window. The car shuddering on the dirt road corrugations, the smell of the dust creeping in through the door seals. The bonnet of the vehicle would rise up and up the window full of the mountains and the fierce blue of the inland sky. Then the old car would pitch downwards, seeming to lose traction. From where I was seated, it looked like we'd driven off a cliff. I held my breath as we tipped over the crest of the hill and landed back down on the road. Then I could see it once again, snaking its way across the Bunyaroo Valley. We were driving deep into the Flinders Ranges and had headed out on yet another Sunday afternoon family picnic to one of the range's cool valleys. Bunyaroo, Brachina, Parachilna, Buckaringa. The old names folded into memory. My father was senior master at the secondary school in Quorn, a small town on the edge of the outback. We lived in an old stone house on the edge of town. I had come back on a long distance cycling tour from Blinman to Adelaide in South Australia with my friend Dave Axford, starting in the desert and finishing in the city. We were following the Mawson Trail, a purpose designed 900 kilometre ride which traverses bush tracks, back roads and highways, winding its way through both the Flinders and Mount Lofty ranges. Hawker. We would pass through small towns like Hawker, town Wilmington, Melrose, Clare and Riverton, where my family moved after Quorn when my father took up the position of principal at the secondary school. I started my own schooling there at the tiny Catholic primary school run by the Sisters of Mercy. These were the landscapes of my childhood, growing up in the dry interior of South Australia the family seemed to keep moving south every few years in the 60s, following my father's school postings. By 1970, we'd landed in Blackwood in the Mount Lofty Ranges. Even then, we kept going back to the Flinders, the family caravan being towed by whatever Holden we had at the time. My mother was an art teacher and artist. Her watercolours of the ranges hung on the walls of the houses we lived in. Reminding us that those landscapes were an important part of our family story. Paintbrushes, small tubes of watercolours, they were as normal as golf clubs, fishing rods, hiking boots. These were just things you packed in the caravan as you took roads north, south, east or west. Landscape it seemed was in our blood, right from the start. The historian Simon Sharma wrote that before it can ever be a repose for the senses, landscape is a work of the mind. Its scenery is built up as much from the strata of memory as from layers of rock. This is a popular view. It follows on from the 17th century Dutch masters their paintings of landscapes and seascapes taught us how to view scenery, how to shape the land in the mind's eye. They were the precursor to artists like Hans Heysen, who came to paint the Flinders between 1926 and 1949. Photographers like Harold Kaysno were also there in the Flinders. Their images laying a trail every bit as real as a dusty road for the tourists to follow years later. Landscape is a cultural way of seeing, 
It guides where we stop to take in the view. How we arrange a scene for a photograph. Even how we might design a long distance cycle trail. But I think it can also be sweat and toil. It's muscle soreness and aching bones after an all day ride. It's the sound of galahs in the gum trees and the quietness of distance. It seeps into the flesh of young children, let play in creek beds and fields of wild flowers, smelling the soft breeze drifting down from the dry hills. Now here I was again, riding my bike back into the country of my childhood. I'm shuddering down the same road to the Bunyaroo Valley, pulling up at the crest of the hill, just before it falls steeply into the valley, I roll to a stop and take in the view. Dave and I had teamed up for the Mawson ride. We had met at university in the late 70s, both studying physical education. We would bushwalked through the Flinders in our undergraduate days as part of a university expedition. Another friend, Mike Folland and I, even tried to set some sort of speed record on a nine hour, 52 minute run that took in the summits of the three tallest peaks, Mount Alec, Pompey's Pillar and St Mary's. The area is now the Ikara Flinders Ranges National Park and is co-managed by the South Australian government and the Udni Mutna people, the traditional owners. Work and life had taken me interstate and I hadn't been back for nearly 40 years. And a cyclist, even an ageing one, traces a different path to that of the bushwalker. The walker seeks out wilderness. The cyclist finds the road. I came back to see if I could record some of the sounds and scenes, and as always to scribble in my journal. I hoped that certain things would catch my attention, nudge me towards reflection. Perhaps if lucky, I might get a decent photograph or find a poem out there on the backcountry dirt roads. Enough to make me travel thoughtfully, wondering about the presence of that landscape in me through the years. Would it still look the same, sound and feel the same, from the seat of my mountain bike, climbing and rolling through the hills and valleys beneath those vast inland skies? Dave and I had pedalled south from Blinman on the sealed road, a gentle introduction to the journey. But it was time to get off the bitumen and into the ranges. A rough bit of track axe. No point risking bike or body on day one, mate. Interesting terrain. So, heading along the Wilcola track, just beneath the north wall of Wilpena Pound. Cypress pine, red quartzite, beautiful country. heading out over more very dry desert country today and see how far we get with a bit of luck we'll make it all the way to Quark.
Kanaka Creek Bed. Bare feet on water-worn stones pressing into flesh. In a landscape so quiet, you think you can hear the clouds advancing from the west. River gums hang over banks. Roots break rock. Listen to the soft sound of birds foraging, the hum of insects in tiny flower buds, their little feet making ripple rings when they touch down on the only pool of water between here and the horizon. There's a breeze hushed through the leaves. It's here. Life is here, if you really listen. But rusted wire has unspooled into the creek bed wrapped itself inside piles of flood debris at the base of the mason's pillar. It still stands against the blue sky, remembers that people listening to rumours down south whispered far-fetched stories told over a beer in the pub at the port. They were smiling when they climbed aboard the train north. Now the old line is wrecked, and the dream has washed out somewhere onto the empty plain. It's still out there drying in the sun. The Wallachra Selection. We ride the dusty road to country lands newly opened in 86, which must be crossed to reach better country. A windmill clanks slowly, lifting mineral water, but there's no stop coming in. Two kangaroos bounce away, an old, leaning bushman's fence is no fence to them. A big red keeps watch as we stop, rest a moment, then keep moving on, always moving on, above Goiter's line of rainfall. This country's no good for farming, so they said. You might run a sheep or two, but don't be fooled by the good year when you pass through. Grass and flowers forever, but I'll lay you a bet that the rains won't come next year or the next. Grass and pretty flowers turn to dirt, dirt to dust. Then the wind blows it all away, somewhere down south, further south. But it didn't stop them coming to take their chances on the Wallachra selection. So we keep moving on, always moving on, past the ruined homestead and the town that never was. Better country. The back road to Quorn is folded like a rain catcher. Water holds in cool gorges in better country. A bank of green grass says, stop here, rest here, under shady river gums, where galahs and cockies play all day in the branches. The road rises, falls and rises, south then further south. Climbing up you see there's real fences, real paddocks, They've tilled the soil here, and you see them once again standing waist deep in the wheat. Oh, those were the years when everything seemed possible. By God, South Australia harvested half the nation's crop. Oh yes, those were the days in better country. There's a bitumen road now all the way to Warren Gorge. Even though the cattle grid is broken on the road, the run to Quorn is pure downhill thrill, windrush all the way to the little town in the wide valley, which till now had always seemed too far away. Landscape. The word means a projection onto land, a work of the mind, before it can ever be a repose for the senses. Yes, it's a powerful idea that shapes tourism and how we see the land, but I'm not so sure that it's always true. Some landscapes seep into the senses of young children and lodge there, affecting a lifetime. Actually, the word can be traced further back than the Dutch masters, to medieval Old English. Somewhere back there, deep in cultural memory, 
We scaped the land through bodily work, hands in soil with axe and plough, landscape and people making each other, shaping each other. This I think is true. We all fall somewhere between these two meanings, sensory immersion in the landscape and our cultural ideas of what we think it should be. On the first part of the ride, I was reawakening my childhood senses. The smell of a dry creek. The feel of the trail beneath the high peaks. The quiet sounds of the open spaces. Echoing voices in the deep gorges. But now I was alert to a place that had been peopled back into deep time. Their human stories. My own as well. Every bit as complex as the great folded ranges. Pedalling along the road to Bunyaroo, stopping right on the edge to take in the view once again, I feel all the years between fall away, back into the deep valley below. Join me in episode two of Through Rangers Sad and Beautiful when we ride south oh, from Bourne to Riverton in the mid-north farming districts it, uh, of wet. South Australia. <laughs> it is just the best surface.